All right. Uh, welcome everybody back to the third InfraSig meeting. Uh, I think three means we've officially made it. Um, got a packed uh, sort of agenda. Um, so I'm start with going over state of current initiatives uh, and then talk new business and an outline what things, uh, well, we could do this as part of state of the initiatives too, but like what things we want to target um, going forward over the next uh, month since we meet about every month. Um, and with that, I will jump right in. Um, so the first one, hopefully I ordered these ahead of time, uh, is documentation, uh, which I consider completed because um, we have merged all of the open PRs uh, to form an infra and moved things over from uh, Redmine. And uh, as far as I recall, I updated all the Redmine pages, uh, the various ones um, to point to this. So if anybody remembers that they exist and goes looking for them, uh, they will be redirected. Uh, but from here going forward, all infra documentation should go to the Foreman Infra uh, Docs repo. So updates, new infra, uh, et cetera. So I'm going to move this on down to completed items. All right. Any for any comments or questions on the docs move completion? All right. Um, moving down into uh, the larger topic of rack space migration, but really the first item is the uh, web server. And uh, if Guinea, give us uh, the dates have come and passed for this, but go ahead and just give us an update on if uh, if everything came to fruition. I don't remember if I hit every single of those dates, but uh, the web server is gone. Uh, the new machine is up and running, and we also moved the Debian repositories behind the, the CDN, basically in the same move. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah, and there is still a uh, like, disk backup of the machine lying around in rack space. So if anything's really important, we can still fire it up. But the, the main machine and just the cost is gone. So the VM, the VM itself was destroyed. Yeah. Very cool. Um, I don't know why I had documentation to migrate all docs. That seems like the same thing. Uh, I think I just kind of go down the list here. So now with now for Rackspace migration, we've got the uh, Jenkins and uh, Foreman slash Puppet server uh, to go. Um, we had built out last time a plan for the Jenkins. Uh, we did not have a target date because we weren't sure when somebody was going to be able to get to that. Um, but I believe we were saying that that should be our next target and then finally do the form and puppet server move. Um, so I will, I, I guess uh, I will at least ask if anybody based on what they've got going on or, or whatnot, want to take ownership of moving the Jenkins right now. Uh, if not, that is fine. We can discuss it you know, further on the website. Uh, I think it's probably one of those where it'd be good if we could try as a group to, to like move one 
even if we only move one thing a month, that still at least gets us off rack space in two months. Um, I think probably the trick with Jenkins right now is we are coming up on another release in uh, what are we at? two and a half weeks or so. And uh, Tomer loves when we go play with infrastructure when there's a release being done. So if we could do this in two and a half weeks, I think he would really appreciate it. Well, considering we still have not created two, two and we're launching in two and a half weeks, I think we're in the, there's always a release going on right now. But hopefully two and three would be faster. Maybe this would be better though to target sometime after RC one for Foreman two three. At least then you have an RC out there, and if we break stuff, uh, yeah, we'll have a couple of weeks anyways with the RC. So and hopefully by that time two two will GA. So. <coughs> Um, and I'll just put on for the form of puppet server one uh, looking for a, looking for a volunteer to own moving that um, I don't believe there's any updates on redmine migration uh, we currently don't have an owner for that either um, So again, uh, if somebody would like to take ownership of that, please do volunteer to go look into the various things. I mean, we have kind of action items uh, built out for that. Uh, I, well, um, on how we can start to proceed with it, I realize we actually do not have uh, anything built out for this item. Uh, which I think it's been worked really well to build out the process of how this would get done in the information ahead of time. So then it's got an easy reference for anyone. Um, so let's just swing back up for a second to the form and puppet server one. Um, wait, I should know this. What is the current host name for this guy? On the top of my head, up marsh.deform.org. Yeah, but I think that's right. Okay. So we don't really, I guess, uh, suppose we don't, well, is that the, I don't know what I'm saying in my head, sorry. Do we need a new host name to be able to make this migration easier, or is it better to just to take an outage and keep that host name? Okay. Yeah, I would like to decouple the host name from the service name, and then just see name the actual service name. I think that we don't actually have that set up in DNS, we only set it up on uh, inside our info. No, it's in DNS and all public agents are configured to connect to it. Um, okay. Oh, well. So what would what what are we thinking for the service name? Similar pattern to what we've done with other infrastructure. Is that what I'm getting by that like foreman dot osu osl dot the foreman dot org or I would at least include a number as well, so you can replace it later. Yeah, but also the other way around. The service name is Puppet the Foreman Org, and the host name is Puppet 1 
dot audio CSL dot deployment log. Uh, given it runs Foreman with a puppet server on it, do we want to move to a naming scheme that represents that it's actually a, the Foreman server, not just the puppet server? So it's foreman.deformant.org? <laughs> well, the, the name sort of indicates why we have it. It's, pop, it's for puppets, and Foreman just ha happens to tag along. It does, but every time I've ever gone to that host, I do it because I'm using the foreman, not because I'm using, like Puppet is the like back end for it, but I'm using the foreman side of it, which is always what confuses me because I always forget that it's I'm going to the Puppet server, but I'm going there to use the foreman that's there. <laughs> well, I would propose that we actually have two service names, both foreman.deformal.org and puppet.deformal.org, and make sure they both work. that is what I understand is the proposal and then what would, what is the proposed host name then is that the one that gets the number yeah And we might as well include the actual location, like we do with other services. I mean, would it be for people like me? Would it be helpful for it to be like Foreman dash Puppet O one or Foreman or Puppet O one dot Foreman dot OSU dot et cetera, et cetera? We have zero. Thought, it thought it's a bad idea because then you introduce a new domain and a dash could work, but then it will be inconsistent with all the other host names. For what it's worth, when I hear it, I hear one is more inclusive than the other to everything going on with the box. I get a foreman is more descriptive of everything the box has versus puppet. So instead of like Puppet 01, Foreman 01? I don't have a strong dog in the fight, just providing input. You could also go for something like uh, Management or MGMT 01. Well, I'd be okay with management. If we go with MGMT, I think we're just adding to the same level of confusion. People are going to think we switched to a new config provider. Naming things is hard, but let's not waste all of the making them that. I was timing how long before you said that, Tomer. <laughs> this is the fun. Naming is the fun part. Let's call it by shed. Oh, well. It's, it's the best part. Uh, okay. Only um, if you have a beer. <laughs> All right, everybody go yeah. get one. Come back in two minutes. Break time. Um, uh, all right, so then let's move to, we'll move to action items. And, uh, what, just like we did with Jenkins up there, um, create a new machine running EL8. Um, Right, somebody, somebody take over while I type what we would then do to migrate this particular instance since we can't add it to form because it is formed. Well, I guess we would need to do a db dump and install. Oh. Yeah, it's also good to know that install form and install. Currently, we don't manage form itself with Puppet. 
Um, I would actually propose that we do. Maybe what is it? What would that entail, or what does that mean for this process and what we're doing here? I think normally what I would do is start managing Puppet as well on uh, start using Puppet to manage from an old existing server in node mode, see what it changes and make sure it's all managed. And once you have that, you simply install the new machine, you add it to the existing form, and you let Puppet run, and it should end up being provisioned. So as in you add the new machine to the existing foreman to install and set up foreman on the new machine before you then switch the existing foreman to this machine? Yeah, essentially, um, at some point, you start turning everything off. You do database dump, you import the new database. You probably want to copy all the certificates. And I'm not sure what else is there in state. I haven't looked too often. I wonder if you personally to check our instructions in the manual for backup and restore and make sure that they are correct. I'm missing also a nuance here of like, should after create new machine is oh, step two install it, like run the installer and then bring over your databases and restore them? No, or? I would just manage it with Puppet itself and let that, that do it. I wouldn't touch the installer, to be honest. That's a glowing, that's a glowing recommendation for our installer right there. Um. <clears throat> to, be, to be honest, I think I never really ran the installer on production machines. You know this is being recorded, right? <laughs> yeah, well, I think my production machines were installed before the installer was a machine was installer was a thing. Oh, there you go. Uh, I did not put this before. I think it's it probably in the discourse, but uh, in chat is at least a link to the edit for this. If anybody does want to just edit or add things as we go, but. Uh, Partially because I'm getting a, a smidge lost on what the actual like action items and set of things we would be doing here is uh, and in what kind of order we'd be doing them. I would start with managing the former instance itself with Puppet on the existing server. And that would be right up to classes uh, to manage. Do we have the right configuration? I'm sorry, I think I only got a half of that for some reason. Yeah, apparently has some slight network hiccup. Um, so what I normally do when I puppetize something is I write up the classes, um, I put puppet in node mode, add them to the host, and sort of iterate on that until I have the right configuration. Once it uh, applies cleanly, um, I put it back in um, out of node mode. Yeah, so then next I put the PTP machine. After that, I would add existing form, add the right classes. And then it should have a form installed. That's probably includes an additional database, but that's okay. You can dump that. 
do actually switch both from one. Fortunately, you're going a little robot on us. <clears throat> because one of them but there might be more I think we should pick a ship and switch over tape before we actually do that because then that's sort of the actual migration. This part is the actual migration or the um I think applying puppet isn't really part of migration, but after dumping then it is. All right, um, I will just encourage folks to uh, so just kind of move along uh, since that's a pretty good outline is edit anything in there that doesn't make sense or is out of order or uh, any additional steps anybody thinks of. So we have a outline for anyone that wants to take ownership of it and attempt to tackle it. Uh, like I said, same thing we did there with the Jenkins. Yeah, I don't mind taking ownership um, of it. Okay. Yeah, I don't mind taking ownership of the for one and public migration, but I can promise I will get to it soon. Uh, I think I feel like as long as we get to these two as a whole in the next two months, we're okay. Um, all right, moving down, we talked about red mine migration. Um, do we have any new information or updates around ARM builders? Uh, last time we had noted that we were dis going, the builds are disabled as of 2.1. They're still there supporting 2.0, and we need to do some decision around if we're keeping ARM. Uh, yeah, so it turned out that they were disconnected for a month or so because the DNS changed. Uh, I fixed it today, but um, before that, we basically didn't do anything. So we can mostly drop them already. I would say let's drop them for now. Anyways, uh, we haven't been building on for a couple of months at least. Um, and if that's enough demand, we can revisit this. Um, so yeah, I would also say that given the lack of capacity on our end, on the deep impact machine side, that we shouldn't add more to it. The proposal is drop the arm builds. Uh, announce it that discourse, then just wait and see. Uh, to actually drop the arm builds, uh, what, what, what actions should we actually, like what actions do we need to actually take or should we take uh, to, to, I guess, clean, clean things up or should we just break DNS again? Like are there machines we need to just 
decommission so they're not spending resources uh, or is there DNS we need to clean up for now? I think last time I looked at the um, machines and scale were uh, actually disabled. No, I fixed that. The uh, ah. scale changed to DNS and so the connection broke. Uh, but I've now put it into uh, the correct DNS again. Anyways, those machines are going to be dead in a couple of months once scale rate tops the um, support completely. So do we need to keep them running still to support 2.0? I doubt it. Um, probably won't be doing another release of that. Then we all can we turn them off? So can we turn them off and uh, keep them in scale way, or is that no financial difference? Charging us for machines that are off, but uh, to be honest, I don't see another 2.0 at least before GA, which or 2.2, which will probably be in a week or so, uh, meaning that we won't be using them anyways. Uh, okay. Uh, who actually has Scaleway access to do this that could be, could own going and doing this? Really? Destroying sin is easy. <laughs> so, I can. I always count on Evgeny to volunteer to destroy something. Yeah, I guess in any case, even if we decide to eventually put in back on builds, we would do that with Nike on a different machine on AWS or somewhere. Um, won't be on those machines. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I think AWS um, offers ARM. I think also uh, Oregon has some ARM machines, I'm not sure how many and how, how good we can get access to them. Um, <clears throat> but really, I prefer to see a need for ARM builds before going this route. Yeah, so far, well, there was one person who offered to donate ARM builders uh, from the community, but even they were actually using it on our to a small like oh you need some um, machines for that I can donate some money but they're not actually using it nobody actually said no please don't pop arm we rely on a lot all right well let's go just Turning them off, saving those resources, and uh, you know, some, and reducing our, our matrix. And if someone comes along and really wants it, we can then discuss it as a community. You know, the effort to uh, what it would get. Uh, moving down, um, was the form and infra cleanup CI directory. Any updates there? Uh, I guess you were, you were owner on that. Uh, no progress. Um, okay. Any updates on use of Jenkins files? No. All right. Evgeny, any updates on archiving old Debian releases? No. Okay. Um, and I need to put this on the agenda to discuss that further, but it will go down 
at the bottom. So um, <clears throat> moving on to new business. Uh, replacing Travis with GitHub Action slash Jenkins for puppet modules. I'm going to assume that's Ewu from my knowledge of what he's been working on. I think I wrote that. Oh, did um, you write that? Well, he can give yeah. you updated. After talk, <laughs> well, after talking with everyone about that. Um, <laughs> so basically, it's uh, right now the problem is that releasing modules is really painful. Travis limits us to ten concurrent work uh, jobs or workflows or whatever they call it. Um, and considering that every PR in every puppet module triggers something like six or seven different tasks, um, that means that releasing modules can sometimes take several days just because we're waiting on Gravis to finish the queue. Um, now, GitHub Actions uh, has 20 concurrent jobs, um, and I think it is a bit faster than Travis, but I'm not sure it's fast enough, and we've been also migrating some uh, JS tests and other stuff to GitHub Actions already. So I'm concerned that we would hit the same wall with the uh, GitHub Actions, um, just in a different point. Um, and then there's a, the question of should we do this on Jenkins or can we somehow reduce the test matrix so we don't trigger seven different jobs for every single PR or commit? So the test matrix is, is mostly large because of POP5 and POP6. Um, POP5 is going end of life next month. So that will already reduce it. And I don't know what else um, we can do. I mean, you still want testing for all of the different scenarios. Um, I do have a PR ready for GitHub Actions. I have been iterating on it quite a bit. Um, also, the difference is that we can stop doing a build after merge. I don't know if we can actually do that off with Travis. So that will already reduce the number of builds we do. Um, another benefit is that with GitHub Actions, I also set up caching of the bundle files. Travis doesn't have that, so or we don't use it, at least there. Um, that already speeds up the build as well. Um, so I'm leaning to at least moving on to uh, GitHub Actions first. Um, another reason I prefer GitHub Actions right now is that the containers we run um, use Beaker. This is not Red Hat Beaker, but the, another project with the same name with roughly the same goal. And the Docker implementation, well, with Docker, they run as privileged containers, which means you essentially give root, full root access to that container. And I don't like that, which is why I don't like Docker in general. That it's um, the, um, ah, how did he put it again? Docker is giving like possible to pseudo, um, but at least, at least possible pseudo gives you auditing. Um, so that's why I like keeping it in Git actions at least because it, it doesn't compromise our infrastructure. It sounds like too, with the higher limit, we, in, in the progress so far, we can move to GitHub Actions, uh, free up, uh, get a higher limit on our concurrency and then just monitor it and reevaluate uh, if we're, if that's still causing us pain points or if we uh, are, are feeling good about it or, you know, we're not being blocked or hindered by it uh, and reevaluate in future, future meetings if we need to take further action. Uh, and I did put in there a link to the effectively the PR that you've been working on that is uh, for the repo where we have common things for puppet modules that then get PRs get created against all the various puppet modules with the same uh, structure. Um, so we can keep the job definition in one place and, and uh, flush it out to all the various modules. Um, <clears throat> does that, uh, 
any, any, I guess, any objections to going that being the route that we go? So thumbs up. Um, one question is uh, how far away are we with that uh, change? Since we have the branching for two to three coming up, and we we'll probably need to release a bunch of modules. Uh, but be really happy if we manage to get that change in before, so we can we aren't blocked on the module releases. So I did some test builds of that with three or four modules. And in general, it's looking good. Um, I just need to go over all the individual modules that we have and check them. But overall, it, it's looking good. So I hope to finish it this week. Um, but I think we could probably. We at least could have some completed, which I guess technically does help because then we're splitting across two infrastructures, so we get even better yeah. concurrency. <laughs> yeah, 30 jobs, 20 and 20 dollars. Yeah, OK. Uh, My experience right. with module six, once you have the template ready, it's just opening all the different PRs and checking that they're green. And that's a bit painful because you can't really um, or you, you, if you add a PR that didn't with the work for the things issues before, it doesn't trigger Git actions. So I'm leading to just pushing a minimal one, like a blank file, and then um, I think all the different ones, but I will have a look. And I expect them to be ready this week, um, to be honest. Cool. <clears throat> I'd be in favor of the blank one so we can see them actually run and pass. Um, uh, okay, we got four minutes left, uh, so that um, I think we'll cover just this second topic and then call it a meeting, uh, which is new sponsor from Evgeny. So I was rambling around how well Rackspace worked out for, for us the other day, and a friend of mine who works in Austria at an ISP asked, if we need any compute resource. Um, they are a VMware shop, and they could offer us essentially a VMware cloud, whatever the product name is. Um, we get access, and we can spin up machines as in any cloud, but it's VMware-based. Um, while we don't have any compute resource integration with that, um, we don't use it with OpenStack anyway, so um, I don't see that as a problem. My main um, question is, do we really need more compute resources? And if we need more, how much should we ask for? So I think one thing is uh, if they give us access to the um, we center or wispy or whatever it's called maybe that could also be useful as a resource we could use for vmware tests and development i don't know um my understanding is that this is the cloud not vmware so it oh. might be different but i have no idea okay i could and find the second thing is yeah um Sorry, I could find out how different it is to a normal vSphere. From my experience, when I played around, or when my previous employer ran vCloud, it's completely different from VMware, from vSphere. Nothing alike. And in that case, I think. I don't see any for more Jenkins nodes, but maybe we could use that to reduce the AWS load, which is, I think, like now the one we're paying the most for. We have, I think, four or five nodes running on AWS that are paid for. Um, I know you said that. We, 
I mean, we could look at not reduce, like just adding nodes and then using that as a way to reduce um, the, <clears throat> sorry, the, the slots per existing nodes. Cause I have heard from um, some developers that sometimes they see like jobs take too long or crash out for various re for, for reasons. And uh, I've seen, it seems like cases where that could be indicative of because we it's set to so many slots that if the raw if the if it's like say three Catello jobs all line on the same node, they have the potential to like crush the box because they're overusing the CPU and memory and database and, and all the pieces and parts and things and the parallelism of it all can crush the box. Uh, so this could be a way to like reduce that, help reduce that pain point by adding more nodes and reducing the slots on the existing nodes, like is another way to get capacity. I was trying to think myself real quick if it was possible to make use of this with like ci.centos.org because we hit those limits when we're doing big matrices because of all the OSs we support, but I, I don't know if that would be that easy to do. Uh, like coding it up and, and managing it spread across two like that. I would fear that would be way too complicated. <clears throat> um, but we can, you know, think on this. We can talk about it more. There's some questions to go ask and look into. Like, uh, is it? Do you? Can I put the company down that offered Evgeny? It's Conova. C O N O V A. C O N O V A. Yeah. Uh, all right. Uh, so like I said, sorry, we're two minutes over. Um, we completed two items, uh, added, built out some new items, added some owners, things to tackle before next uh, time. Uh, and I will update the agenda based off that. Uh, if you take ownership of something or want to or start working on it, do please post the InfraSig um topic on discourse uh, that you would like to take ownership or that you're starting to work on it in any relevant information and also try to post just updates as things progress there um, so that uh, we have just people can see and contribute and comment uh, as we're progressing. Um, and thank everybody for their time and contribution in coming. Uh, look forward to seeing you next time around and for these updates to the infrastructure. All right. Thanks.